Hey, welcome to lesson 11 of our tutorial series on how to create 2048 in Unity. After this lesson, you'll have created all of the basic game mechanics for 2048. In this lesson, we're going to be going over how to display a game over screen to the player when all the cells are filled and there's no more possible combinations. But before we get started, I'd like to say that if you're just now clicking on this tutorial series, then you'll want to start at the beginning. And you can find lesson one linked to in the description below. Now let's get on with the lesson. Now before we get started with this lesson, there's one thing that we need to fix from our previous tutorials. And that is found within our game controller script. So I'll open that up. Now inside this script, we have our spawn fill function, which if you remember, is a recursive function. And this is so that when we pick a cell that's already been filled, we'll then try again to pick a different cell. But the problem occurs when all of our cells are filled, this will then cause an infinite loop. So to fix this, we're gonna make some modifications to this script. And the first modification that we'll make is that we'll change this all cells array to be of type cell 2048 instead of transform. Now making this change will cause a couple errors. And to fix these errors, wherever we are calling our all cells variable, we need to make sure that we're referencing the transform afterwards. And that'll fix all the errors in this script. I'm going to save this script and go back to Unity to make sure that we're not getting any other errors in our other scripts, which we aren't. And so I'll go back to our game controller script. And now within our spawn fill function, we can check to see if there's an available space before we try to instantiate a new fill object. To do this, we're gonna create a local bool variable and we'll call it is full. And we'll set it equal to true. Then all we have to do is for loop through our all cells array and check to see if there's at least one empty cell. So we'll type for int i equals zero i is less than all cells dot length i plus plus. Inside this for loop, we'll type if all cells square brackets i dot fill equals null, then we can set is full equal to false. Then outside our for loop, we'll create another if statement. We'll check to see if is full equals true, in which case we'll return. Now let's go ahead and save this script and we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we need to select our game controller script and we need to reinitialize our all cells array. To do this, I'm going to set the size back down to zero. I'm then going to lock the inspector. I'll then select all the cells in our 2048 grid that we were using for the transforms and I'll drag them all into the all cells array. And that should fix the problem with this infinite loop. All right, so the first thing that we need to do to create the end game is to create a game over screen. So I'm gonna right click on our canvas, go down to UI and select panel. We can then rename this game object to game over panel. We'll then right click on this panel, go down to UI, select text, and we'll right click, go down to UI and select button. Now I'm gonna readjust these objects so it looks like a good game over screen. All right, so I made the text object so that it says game over up at the top of our screen. And I made the button into a restart button and put it down at the bottom. All right, the next thing that we need to do is create an algorithm that can detect when the player has run out of space, at which point we'll then enable this panel and allow the player to restart. To get started with this, let's open up our game controller script. Now inside this script, we want to create an int variable, and we'll call this is game over. We then need a serialized field of type game object, and we'll call this game over panel. At this point, we then need to create a public function. So I'll scroll down to the bottom. This will be a public void function, and we'll call this game over check. Inside this function, we want to increment our is game over variable. So is game over plus plus. We can then add an if statement, checking to see if our is game over variable is greater than or equal to 16. And if it is, then we want to enable our game over panel. So game over panel dot set active and we'll pass in true. Now while we're at it, let's create the restart function that will pair to the restart button. So this will be a public void function. 
called restart. To restart the game, we're just going to reload the game scene. To do this, we're going to type scene manager, which isn't recognized because we need to add a namespace. So I'm going to click on it, hold alt, press enter. We're going to add the using unity engine dot scene management namespace. We can then do dot load scene and we'll just pass in a zero. Now for calling our game over check function, we want to scroll up to our update function. And before we send our slide action, we want to reset the is game over variable. So I'm going to call is game over equals zero. I'm then going to copy this line of code and we'll paste it into each of these if statements. We can then save this script and we'll go over to our cell 2048 script. Inside this script, let's create a new function. This will be a void function and we'll call it cell check. Inside this function, we want to look at each of the neighboring cells and see if the values of those cells are different than our current cell. So the first check that we'll do is on the current cell. So if fill equals null, we'll then return. Because if the current cell isn't filled, then our player can still move. We'll then do all the necessary checks for the neighbor in the up direction. So if up does not equal null, we're doing this because we want to first make sure that there is a neighbor in the up direction. We can then do if up dot fill equals null, then we'll return. We can then do if up dot fill dot value equals fill dot value, then we'll return as well. We can then copy these if statements and paste them in three more times. We'll then go through each if statement and change the up variable to right, down, and left. Now if we make it through all of these if statements, it means that our current cell is filled and blocked by another fill object with a different value on all four sides. So at this point we can call our game over check function. So I'll type game controller 2048.instance.gameOverCheck. Parentheses semicolon. And the last thing that we have to do is call our cell check function. And we'll do this within our onslide function, and we'll do it at the top of the function. Now this function will execute on all 16 cells. And so if our isGameOver variable reaches 16, then we know that our player can no longer move, and that's when we'll display the game over panel. So let's save all of our scripts and we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we want to select our game controller object, and we then need to set the game over panel variable. So I'll drag that object in there. We then need to select our restart button and we'll add an on click event. We then need to drag our game controller object into this field and use the drop down menu to select game controller 2048 and restart. I'll then select our game over panel and I'll disable it in the hierarchy. And now we're ready to test our project. All right, so now I'm going to play through my game until I've filled up all of the cells. All right, so there I have all of the cells filled and it looks like there's no direction that I can press in order to combine some of the fill objects. And so now when I do press the direction again, you can see we have our game over screen. And the last thing that we have to test is our restart button. All right, awesome job. Welcome to the end of this tutorial series. Give yourself a pat on the back because you've just created all of the basic mechanics for 2048 in Unity. I hope this tutorial series wasn't too difficult. If you have any suggestions on how we can improve these tutorial series, then please let us know in the comments below. If you'd like to start a new tutorial series, then here's some videos that we think you might enjoy. And finally, if you'd like to show your support for our channel, then please sign up to become a supporter on our website at www.infogamerhub.com. We only ask for $3 a month, and in return you get a whole bunch of additional benefits. Now once again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.